Hello Internet, so nice to see you. I have an interesting question I want to answer. I know you can't use the letter twice in minor and major, but why does D-sharp harmonic minor have a C double sharp, not a D? Our notation system for the name of the notes is weird, I agree with you. And indeed, I had a number of people in my YouTube channel commenting on a few videos I made that in their opinion, the old our notation system is wrong, the relic of a past era, and something that we should ultimately let go in favor of a different notation. And yeah, I have mixed feeling on that, because on one side it's true that our notation system for notes is weird, but on the other side is that there is this it's made this way, the notation system is made this way for a specific reason and that it help us making music okay so let me show you what is the good part of our notation system then if you want to change or not however up to you i had people commenting again on my comments that they will not ever learn how to read music and they will just use a piano roll but the thing is this goes beyond if you use notation tablature piano roll or you don't use any notation the idea of the name of the notes is that it helps you make music so let me show you how Rule number one here, and again, I struggle in calling those rules, but let's say the way we do it is that we use only one letter per note. So if you have a scale of seven notes, and we're using commonly seven letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay, then it's great. You use one of those letters per note, and then you adjust using sharps and flats, okay? However many sharps and flats you need to use. Okay, that's the basic rule. Of course, if you have scales of eight or more notes, like a diminished scale, well, then all the rules go out of the window here, okay? Also because the diminished scale is a symmetric scale and it, this stuff doesn't really apply anymore. As you're going to see, the intervals are weird there. Uh, but if you have a seven note scale, which means major scale, minor scale, all the harmonic minor, melodic minor, all the modes, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Phrygian dominant, Lydian dominant, uh, Lydian augmented, uh, augmented five, all those kind of, of, of uh, modes, this rule of one letter per note applies. Why we are doing this? Well, you know, it has to do with intervals, okay? It's, it's to recognize immediately what intervals we are using, okay? So th that's the first thing. For instance, if you go up a fifth from a C note, you're always going to find a G. Now, if it's a perfect fifth and go from, you go from natural C, you're going to find a natural G. But if it's an augmented fifth or diminished fifth, or if the C was a C sharp, or even in some case, strange case, a C flat, you, the, the note a fifth higher, it's always going to be called G. Okay, so once you memorize the letters and the distance, if you're trying to build chords, and you know that the chords are built in thirds, so you, you, have a, always, um, you always jump a note, okay? So you always jump a letter C, E, G, B, and you're building chords this way, you already know what is the next letter. You just need to figure out if there are sharps or flats. Once you use this for a while, it becomes second nature and it becomes super easy to do, to build chords or do other things because the intervals are already built in baked in the letter system. But I agree with you, the whole thing is weird. And it is weird because we are using the sharps and flats to do two different things. Okay, so let me explicit those two things because I don't think, I mean, everybody knows that once they reach a certain level of experience, but I haven't seen this explained clearly. So the first function of sharp and flats is to tell you what notes are in the key. Meaning, if we are working in C major, if you're playing something in C major, the notes are simply the letters, okay? C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Good. But if you're working, for instance, in D major, the notes are not the same. The notes are D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. And we have a sharp here and here because we need to adjust the intervals between those notes so that this sounds like a major scale, okay? If you have any doubt about this, I have a video that is called the Theory from Zero, okay, where we cover all those things. So in that case, good F. That's function number one of sharps and flats. Tell you what are our basic notes in that key, our starting notes, our 
where, where is our home, okay, in that key? Those are the home nodes, okay? But then we use sharps and flats for another function, which is to alter the note in those key. And uh, before we go ahead, let me tell you that, in my opinion, we should have used two different ways, okay? We should have used the sharps and flat just to alter the notes and find another way to write the notes in key or vice versa, because the confusions come from the fact that we're using sharp and flats for both those things, okay? But what do I mean with alter the note? Well, when I'm writing music, sometimes, I mean, I'm just using notes of the scale, but sometimes I want to use notes outside the scale because they have a very specific flavor and they sound good, okay? So, when we go out of key, we take one of those notes and we alter it, okay? This is not something we invented, okay? This is something we discovered, meaning that whenever I use an extra note, your brain try to, tries to categorize that new sound that is not in the scale as being one of those, as being the, the root or the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth or the sixth or the seventh of the scale, okay? That's not something we invented. It may be cultural, I don't know, but that's what our brain does, okay? It makes sense to write this note as being uh, an alteration of an existing note. So, for instance, if I want a note between the G and the A in this D major scale, I could call this note either a G sharp or an A flat. And of course, by the way, I'm doing everything in our 12 note equal temperament. So yes, those, are, those two have the same frequency. Those two are played in the same way on the fretboard. It's the same key on the piano your brain still interprets those differently, okay? As you're gonna see. I'm gonna use the sharp note if this note is gonna resolve up. So if after this G sharp, I'm gonna play an A, so the note, it's out of the, of the, of the scale, but resolves or comes back in the scale by going up, I'm gonna use the sharp, okay? There's a reason for that you're gonna see. If the note instead goes down, I'm gonna use the flat. Okay? And again, these help us find the right chord or the right harmonies for those notes. How? Well, let's say I want to write a G sharp. I want to use a note as it goes out of the key, okay, and then re-enters in the key by going up. So let's say I have a chord progression, some, a chord progression like D, G, something else, A, and then back to D. And in something else, in something else here, I want to have a chord that contains this G sharp. Okay, now with a little bit of experience, you can pick different chords, but a good, a good chord that will work here would be E major. E major is E, G sharp, B. Okay, so I'm gonna put this chord E here, and I'm gonna put the melody note being G sharp. Okay, so what's gonna happen is that the melody note here is something, it's something here. Here the melody note is G sharp, and here the melody note is A, so we're gonna hear this G sharp moving up to A. Okay. So, let's say I have my D then, I have my G, then I have my E major, and my A. Both. I can, I can clearly hear the G sharp in E major going to the A in A major. So play it again. Okay, memorize this feeling. That's that note out of key resolving up. If we called it A flat, we wouldn't have to use an E major because in E major you have a G sharp, not an, e, not an A flat. Again, learning your chords with the right letter and not confusing G sharp and A flat pays off. Um, what if I want an A flat? Okay, now I'm going down. And there are many ways to go down. Okay, one of them. So we're gonna have a melody note of A flat, and so the next melody note is G. So we need to find a way to make that work. Okay. So one way it's to start your chord progression in D. We are in D major. Let's start in D. Okay. Here you're gonna have a strange chord. Here you're gonna have an E minor with a melody note of G. Here we can put an A uh, with whatever, and then we come back to D. Okay. So now, what do we use here? Mm, and by the way, 
I'm actually going to change something here and I'm going to play actually something different. I'm going to put an E flat here. I just changed my mind at the last possible minute. <laughs> this is now completely live improvised. <laughs> okay. Because I just think, hey, this will sound even better. Okay. I'm using even a, a, a different chord here. Now, this, for the people who don't know, that's a Neapolitan chord. Okay. It's always the flat second of the key. But I, I know this will sound good. Okay. Here, that's an A flat note. We need to find a chord that has the A flat note E in. And again, that's not the G sharp. So now you can search around and then write down all the chords who have an A flat note. Here I'm going to use a B flat 7. The 7 is an A flat. Again, if you spell it correctly, B flat is B flat, D, F, A flat. Okay. If I play things in this order, it will sound good. I'm going to try and put all those notes on top, okay? So I'm going to have my D major. I'm going to have my B flat 7. It's out of the key. You feel it. It's out of the key. Okay. Then I'm going to have my E flat. Uh, then I'm going to have my A major, maybe 7, and then D. Okay, I'm in D major. And I'm gonna play this again. Memorize this feeling. These notes that want to resolve down, okay, into this. Let me play the previous example. And this note here is now a G sharp. If I cut away all the sounds before and after, this is the same physical frequency, it's the same whatever you want to call it. It's not, it's not a note yet, okay? It's just a vibration in the air. It's the same vibration for a sharp and G flat. But the psychological feeling you get from a G sharp or an A flat are different. And so we are calling them different because once you spell your chords correctly, it's easier to find that the chord that harmonizes them. Okay? B flat 7 does not contain a G sharp. B flat 7 contains an A flat, if you spell it correctly. So spelling it this, the, those the right way helps you select the right chords. Automatically in the system, all the chords that will work with the note going down have these notes spelled A flat, and all the chords that will work with this note going up have these notes spelled G sharp. It's like the system is doing the work of selecting the right note, the right chord for you by simply labeling those chords in different ways. Okay? Now, of course, I'm not going to see this until you do this kind of thing, until you go out of key. So if you always write in key, you're not going to see this difference. If you never do this kind of thing, you're not going to see the difference. So for you, it makes no difference. So of course, you're going to think, hey, this system is strange and cumbersome and complex and weird and mysterious. And why are we are using it? We are using it because when you go out of key, when you alter your note outside of the key, it helps you find the right chord. Those are but two examples. Okay, there's way more. Way, way, way more. Okay, because you can go out of key in thousands of different ways. Now, if you want to know all this, again, this is just uh, scratching the surface. This is just a, a few minute video on YouTube, guys. Okay, I, I can't really sit here for hours and hours and explain you all the possible ways. But if you want to know all the possible ways, you can because I sat down hours and hours and recorded this in my course, Complete Chord Mastery. In Complete Chord Mastery, which is my course made for guitar players, when we do all the harmony directly on the fretboard, okay, you see all those things and you see all those ways to go out of key and in, back in again, or change key, and you see how to play those chords all over the fretboard. Triads, seven chords, altered chords, okay, uh, anything you want directly on the guitar fretboards that you can write your music directly here without having to worry about notation and stuff. The notation is useful. I'm not saying no, okay? The notation is useful. But you see that once you get used to, to this, this becomes a powerful tool, okay? But here's the thing. If you take complete chord mastery, you don't have to learn how to read music. 
If you want, you can. I'm not forbidding any, anybody, and I have this course too in the course, but you don't have to. You can follow the whole course without knowing how to read. I'm explaining everything there. So if you want to become a master of harmony and guitar, check out Complete Chord Mastery. And now, if you like this video, smash the that like button, don't forget to subscribe and click on notification. And if you have any questions, write them down in the comment. If this explanation was clear, let me know. If this explanation made just a big mess for you, just let me know. I'm going to check your questions and I'm going to keep explaining until you guys understand. And then you can take, you can make your choice if you like this notation system or not. After all, you're not here forcing anybody. I'm just trying to explain the advantage of the traditional notation system. And that's everything. This is Tomas Azzilli of Music4Guitar.com. And until next time, enjoy.